<laughs> All right. Recording take two, and we are preparing the live streaming preview. I've got my phone ready for a watch party as soon as it comes up. So anyone on my Facebook feed will be able to watch us live over there too. Sweet. Okay. title. I don't know where. <laughs> oh, there's the title. All right, extra. This is our fourth session yes. together. Yay. Gems so episode four. Wow. It is, I know. So if you're joining us over on YouTube and this is the first one that you're seeing, there are three other ones that you should check out too. All right. We are now streaming live on Facebook. It is happening. Yeah. All right. It is still not showing up on your profile. Oh, there it is. So I'm going to do. <laughs> we are there. Thank you to everyone who has been patient as we've been getting the technology working this morning. So great to see you all with us. I'm gonna pull it up bigger here too so I can watch for comments on my feed. And Jen is sharing over and doing a watch party on her feed. So we hope you'll be able to join us on one or the other this morning. Yeah, so super easy. You got Jen and Jen here with you. So if you have any questions for us, you'd say Jen H or Jen P, and hopefully we'll be able to answer those questions for you. So um, as always, I just love sharing this space with Jen. And so um, before we even came on, we started kind of chatting and we just started to kind of start with um, me talking a little bit about my week this week. Mm -hmm. So um, so I've had kind of an interesting week where um, the weekend my daughter was a little bit sick and Monday, um, she wasn't really feeling well, so I kept her home um, just to kind of, you know, monitor her symptoms. Um, she had a small fever and not even really thinking that she had some sort of viral, um, something viral. I talked to her pediatrician and we decided to just do some extra testing and things like that on Monday just to make sure that she was okay. But, you know, navigating a sick kid, navigating work, navigating all these other things, I started finding myself getting um, very um, kind of worn down um, pretty quickly with having her sick over the weekend, sick on Monday. Um, it was Tuesday that I really felt like I was super worn. And so as many of you know, I'm divorced and, um, you know, my, uh, we're divorced for a reason and we don't always, always get along, but we, um, our relationship is better now post-divorce, um, but I was navigating some waters too with, with her dad. And I really just felt myself getting completely worn down. Um, even on Tuesday, as I was talking to friends, I felt like all I was doing was complaining and all I was doing was focusing on, oh, you know, and I don't know if I necessarily was like, you know, looking for a pity party or anything like that, but I was, I was finding myself just being very negative. And so, um, so I opened up my, and brushed off the dust because I kind of neglected a little bit and pulled out my beautiful gratitude journal. And um, I just really started trying to refocus. It was great because my gratitude journal has these like great prompts. And the prompt on Tuesday was find three things in your day that you missed that you're grateful for. And so oh, it was like, pulled me in to like force me to start having to think of these things that I'm grateful for instead of thinking of, oh, my kid's sick and I have to run my business and I have to do this and I have to do all these things. And, you know, and I feel fortunate that even as a single mom, that is the primary caregiver for my children, that they have this support for my mom. And I have this support in these things. And so it just like, I just started writing, just started writing. So as I was talking to Jen a little bit, um, I used to always have this, what I would refer to as go, 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 brick wall syndrome. Where I, <laughs> Anybody else I, familiar with that? <laughs> go, 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 brick wall. Yes. I know, exactly. And so now um, I'm much more aware of my needs before I get to that point. So on Tuesday, when I found myself slipping just a little bit, I stopped and I reset. And then on Tuesday, my kids yesterday, I was home with my kids most of the day working and doing stuff. They had a totally different mom than they had on Tuesday. On Tuesday, they had this like kind of negative 
like in this rough place and this like, oh, how am I going to get through this week? And then on Wednesday, they had the reset mom, the mom who, you know, took that time for herself and took that time to really be, you know, present and thinking about, you know, okay, what am I actually grateful for in, in the moments of these things? Um, and also in my book, I've been reading a, the book, The Gift of Imperfection. Um, so I've been reading it slowly to make sure that I'm really taking things in. And even that book talks so much about gratitude and how much gratitude can just like, and I know Jen, you and I talk so much about gratitude. Um, but the other thing that happened this week for me too was boundaries. Mm -hmm. I like really, really set boundaries um, with my space, with you know navigating right now with my husband and navigating all these things. Um, I really took that time to set boundaries, and I really set that time, took the time to like really hone in on gratitude. Thanks, Jen. And I added in the comments, um, what are you grateful for today? Those of you who are joining us, please share. Let us know the things that you are grateful for. There is a lot of research on the powerful effects that expressing gratitude, whether that's in a journal or here on social media together, or wherever you might be writing a thank you note or sending a thank you message um, or a text, the power that has for us physiologically and mentally and emotionally um, is actually very well researched and documented and such an important part of our self-care, um, at least for me and for Jen, this is, is a, an important part of our self-care practices. And I also really appreciate, Jen, that you talked about boundaries as part of that self-care too, because yes. I often think <laughs> that that's an area where many of us struggle with. Um, again, even connecting it back to that go, 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 go brick wall, right? Being able yes. to stop and pause and say no and set boundaries and take care of ourselves and know when we need to reset is so incredibly powerful um, and challenging. And, and before we got on here, I was um, just sharing with Jen how in awe I was of her, as she described this challenging week of being able to practice these things in the moment. And that's really why we've been sharing these self-awareness journeys with you all is because what we found is powerful is not not just taking this in, right? It's not just about the book study and the learning. It's about what happens when we're in the moment. What happens when we're having that incredibly stressful week or day or moment? What are we doing in that moment to take care of ourselves? What are we doing differently um, because of that? Yeah, and as, as Ty shared, the divorce isn't the end. There are new mercies every day. Um, and Jen has some really powerful stories of her journey from that divorce and everything that she's learned. Um, and that's yeah. such an important part of the self-awareness too, is honoring um, the tough times along with the gratitude and the joys and all of that too, being able to hold them both together. I think we've talked in the past, um, the word and is one of the most powerful words that I've learned. Um, this is not a binary world. It is not a world where we're either grateful or struggling. Right. Oh my we gosh. We can be both at the same time. We can be struggling and we can be grateful at the same time. Yeah, go for it, Jen. It's so true. I actually got to practice your and the other day. So it's like I said, I have a sick kid at home. I've got all these, you know, I was like listening out the things and it's like, and I'm also very grateful at the fact that I feel okay in the chaos. And so it's like this beautiful, and I like thought of you as I was writing it too, um, that it was like, I, I got that and in there that it's like, yes, my moment yes. is hard, but yes, I'm still really grateful and yes, yes I'm still okay. <laughs> and so it was, it was really nice. And I, I thought, I, like I said, I thought of you. And so I think that and is just such a powerful um, message and such a powerful thing in terms of how we can even like rewrite or, you know, rethink those things. You know, it's like, um, you know, when we're feeling anxious, we're feeling like nervous and stuff, even like reframing that as excitement, you know, mm -hmm. it's the same thing with gratitude. And it's the same thing with, you know, it's like, it takes that same amount of energy to feel to continue to feel, you know, all the negative feelings that were, I shouldn't say negative because feelings I don't view as negative, no, but the feelings that we are. necessarily want to be feeling. Um, but it, I mean, it takes that same amount of energy just to reshift and reframe our brains and re that mindset to come into this more, you know, joyful, um, more gracious mm -hmm. place. And I believe a part of that is being able to hold it together, of not trying to resist those more challenging emotions, but being able to hold them. Um, I have a lot of um, family members and friends um, who've been grieving a lot over these last couple of weeks um, and who are also celebrating times of joy. And that has been a big challenge. Um, it's something that I've, I've been walking through with friends it's, and family. It's also something I've been experiencing a lot of, of, of being able to hold the grief and the gratitude 
um, to be able to hold the challenges and the gratitude, to be able to hold all that at the same time, and to know that uh, that 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 is, you know, that, that there's not this again. It's not this binary right or wrong, positive or negative. It's it's being able to hold. That's life. Being able to hold that together. Um, and Amy Marie, um, Amy Marie, so good to see you um, and hear you on here. I'm grateful to have supportive friends and family during the chaos of planning a wedding in a pandemic. And what a beautiful example, right, of holding the and, of of being able to be in the midst of this global pandemic and to be planning your wedding um, and and sharing those times together and to know that we can have all that together in the midst of this. And as you write that, that reminds me, um, Jennifer and I were talking before we went live today about her beautiful philosophy around harmony in life. You want to share a little bit about that, Jennifer, for those who may not have heard that before, because it was life changing. When when Jennifer first shared this on the uh, music therapy ed um, resiliency conference that we did together, it just it really shifted my perspective, and and I think it's an important shift. Yeah. So um, so in in one of the um, business adventures that I'm going down, um, I really want to talk about you know the word you know kind of balancing our lives and stuff, but for me the word balance has always been something I've shied away from because every time I think of balance, I think of this teeter totter that's always constantly kind of shifting and going. And for me, that thinking of that teeter totter of being in line just is, is too much for me to think about balance. So I started thinking of what makes me feel, you know, like my life is coming together, that my career, me and my parenting all live in harmony. And so that, that's kind of the thing that came to, and as musicians, we know you can't create harmony alone. Um, that harmony is multiple voices. And so, um, so it made, help me to lean into my resources and help me to start leaning into things. And so when we think about harmony, um, we begin to think about harmony as not just us, but everything around us and everything that we can use to find this place of harmony instead of balance. And so I've always now kind of had that instead of mindset of finding balance in my life, it's finding harmony. And I'm somebody who shies away from asking for help. I'm someone who shies away from admitting when I need help. <laughs> it's helped me to, um, to realize that I can't do this alone. We're not meant to do this alone. We're not, and even when I read, you know, books by Brene Brown and when I read books, you know, from, you know, PhD researchers in psychology, they even say we're not meant to do this alone. We're meant to have friends. We're meant to have family. We're meant to have the people around us. And so this find your harmony instead of finding balance, but finding harmony in our lives has been life-changing for me as well. And so instead of imagining this teeter-totter going, I imagine this like this almost this like huge, just this beautiful universe of these people and the people that are around us. And so, you know, Jen has become part of my harmony this year and has become like a huge support person for me and just somebody who I can to talk with. And so it's opening up to finding the ways that we find harmony in our lives. How do we take care of ourselves? Who are the people that we can count on? Who are the people that we help and rely on too? Who are we a part of their harmony too? And so I think that's, one of the biggest things that has helped me too in this journey, um, being a career driven mom. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jen. And I added a question in the comments of how do you find harmony in your life for those of you listening and joining us, if you'd like to share that today. Um, Jen mentioned how important connection is, and that is really true. Um, Dr. Vivek Murthy, who's our former Surgeon General, has a new book coming out about loneliness and talks about this essential need for survival that we have, um, and that when we're lonely, it actually it's, it's, it sets off um, that fight-flight syndrome. It actually tells us that we are missing something essential for survival, which is fine short term, but in the long term, we know that that's incredibly unhealthy. And um, his research, I'm trying to remember, I have this in um, some of my self-care presentations that I've done, shows the detriment is you know, similar to, I believe, smoking as far as affecting our health, it's even more detrimental than obesity and a sedentary lifestyle. And so this need for connection, and not only connection, but as, as Jen and I have talked about as extroverts, um, and, I, and I believe that a lot of the introverts and the ambiverts out there would agree with us, that it's about meaningful connection. Absolutely. And the need that we have not just to connect, but to connect in a meaningful way, whatever that looks like for you. And so even during this pandemic, you know, for me, some of that is the daily fam jams I have with my family. I need those um, dancing with my niece on Wednesdays with Debbie Allen, um, these connections with Jen. 
um, the time that my husband and I take in the morning that we have set aside for breakfast on the deck and a walk with our dog, um, connecting in nature, supporting ourselves, and then also finding ways to connect with others um, is so important. The other piece I wanted to mention, Jen, that I really love about your harmony analogy is that for me, harmony and music has lots of space for dissonance and resolution. Absolutely. I talk about that a, a little bit as well. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. is so important to allow, right? And for me, part of what makes music so beautiful is the dissonance. Mm -hmm. I love that in music. If music was all just like happy, everything, you know, major, <laughs> I would like some Dorian, please. And I want some minor in there. And I want some, you know, those minor seconds now and then. And I want you to not resolve and surprise me. I love that in music. And yet I can tell you in life, it is often challenging. I want things to resolve. I want them to resolve now Absolutely. <laughs> rather than being able to hold that space that maybe this is one of those times of dissonance. And what can we learn in this moment from that? Absolutely. I, you know, I love that, Jen. And I actually was just talking about that too, a little bit with my, um, one of my business coaches um, on Friday, um, that, you know, that's one of the things that I love about harmony too, is that harmony is not always, and it goes back to what we talked about the last time too, about, uh, you know, sitting in the discomfort and being in the discomfort. Sometimes music, even, you know, if there's a lot of dissonance and things like that, it might make us feel uncomfortable. It might yes. make us you know, especially our trained musician ears, it might make us sit there. And so, but I mean, how many, how many times have we learned in that discomfort? And even right mm. now, as I'm working towards launching a new business that's outside of, you know, music therapy and I'm launching, I'm finding myself, you know, I, I'm finding myself doing things that I didn't do when I launched my business now. Um, and I find myself blocking because of the fact that this business is so personal for me. This new business is so, it's so much of me versus, you know, my business now it's music therapy. It's a team approach. It's this, you know, it's just that the two businesses are so different that now I have to be very aware of my own mind, my script that I write to myself, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, what I, what I tell myself, which is unbelievable. <laughs> I would never say this to anyone else. So why do I say this to myself? And so critical. Um, and so it's like even that, you know, that discomfort of having to push through those things and having to push through, you know, the things that I say to myself, that mm -hmm. it is like that dissonance getting to that, that, you know, if I'm stuck in a, like a, like a five, seven chord right now. <laughs> <laughs> just hanging in there. <laughs> I'm just hanging out here. And so I and so, yeah, and so it's, it, it is, and, and so it's, you know, finding these connections, finding these relationships, finding the people that make you feel good about yourself, too, that, you know, that you can, that help you get to that part, you know, it's, it's centering yourself around the people that bring joy and bring, you know, and so it's, it's doing things like that we're doing right now, that's going to help me through that discomfort, and, and, yeah. you know, and you and I have talked about this stuff so much, even outside of just our gen and, and, <laughs> and stuff, but it's, I mean, it's so important to be able to have these conversations though too, and to be this, you know, real with ourselves. Absolutely. And to step into that discomfort with ourselves, with each other, with our communities around us. Uh, it's one of the things we've talked about in the, in the past on these um, extroverted Gen shows uh, that I've learned from Resma Menikin that I think is really important is how much we need to build our stamina around discomfort. Mm -hmm. And that applies in a lot of areas. It definitely applies when we're talking about conversations around race and helping to start to dismantle some of the system, the systems of white supremacy in our country, in our communities, in our profession. Uh, most of us get really uncomfortable. We get uncomfortable when we step outside of our norm, whatever that norm might be. And yet that's so important in so many areas. And every time we do it, maybe practice doing it a little bit more. And building that stamina, just like we need to build stamina for everything else. You know, I'm a cyclist. I love biking. Um, and every now and then we'll do an, a nice long half day ride. I didn't just hop on my bike and do that. <laughs> that started with a lot of shorter bike rides first. We have to build our stamina. And that includes our stamina around discomfort. And that's something that I know being friends with Jen has been really helpful for. Um, it's something that I'm grateful for a lot of the friendships in my life, a lot of the colleagues in my life who come from different life perspectives and who have different experiences and who have taught me a lot and who have been willing to engage with me in some really uncomfortable conversations and to really explore those things and to allow us to sit in that moment. Um, and again, to allow us to have that dissonance and not yeah. resolve it right away. 
Um, Actually, the thing Jen mentioned that I think is really important is the power of our self-talk, right? Mm -hmm. How many of you, and I I love using this when I present and and we do some journaling around, what would you say to yourself if you were your own best friend Mm. versus what do you say to yourself? I know normally I treat myself like my own worst judge. (laughs) I'm constantly judging and, and speaking to myself in that voice rather than what would you say if you were your own best friend? You know, I, I love that. So, um, so I have some shame built up about things in my past. Who doesn't? Um, and one of the things when it talks about shame resilience that helps you get over shame or, or to become shame resilience is talking about our shame. Mm-hmm. So, um, so with my counselor, one of the things that we did is we pulled back pictures from like when I was in college and when I have like really deep judgment to myself and I, you know, was able to like talk to like she had me like actually literally talk to my pictures and say what I would want to say to myself. Oh. If I could say to myself what I would say to my 19 year old self, what would I yes. say to my 20 year old self? What would I say to my, you know, and I found myself mm-hmm. actually being very nurturing to myself. And I found myself actually being very, um, like almost more accepting of, of that, that it was like, okay, you're 19. You're not, you're not who you are now. Like yes. your, your 35 year old mind is so much different than your 20 year old mind. And so like, it was interesting how much I beat myself up for some of the things that I did and some of my behavior and some of these things. But then when I, when, when I was forced to actually look at this picture, it was like, you know what? I was living life. I was having a good time. I was doing the things in those moments. Yes. I I looked back and it's like, wow, you did some really stupid stuff when you were 20, but who didn't? But it was interesting that some of those things was coming up as shame for me. Mm. It still does come up as shame. Some of it does come up in shame, but now I know how to handle when I start feeling shame um, for some of those behaviors when they get triggered now. But it was like, it was interesting to get to like sit back and actually like have that conversation with myself and how more, how much more gentle I was verbally talking to myself than my mind is when thinking about myself. Mm-hmm. And so it's great challenge. And it was something like, even now, you know, I was, I had some things that happened that I started feeling shame about. And I, you know, I zoomed with some of my closest three friends on Friday night and I just like burn vomited some of it out because I knew that if I didn't say it out loud, that it would, it would sit as shame. It would sit in my body as shame. And I knew that I just needed to talk about it and to people who loved me and people that care about me and people that, you know, will accept me for who I am, no matter what I do and no matter you know, who, what happens. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to have those friends and have those relationships that you can say those things. And, you know, I I feel really fortunate that that's, you know, kind of our relationship too. Me too. And it's part of that harmony that we're talking about. Amy Marie Tippy had a, Amy Marie Tippy had a great um, connection with the harmony analogy as well. And she wrote, I like the idea of harmony in relation to music as well, because at least in singing, we have to, and as playing instruments too, right? We have to take a breath first before we can create that harmony. That's a great reminder for me to take a minute and think before responding. And even for me to pause and breathe. We know that six deep breaths will significantly lower our blood pressure, our anxiety level. And so that's something that I've been doing a lot of work on, um, especially when I'm in those uncomfortable situations. And I've had some over these last couple of weeks, there's a lot going on. um, And I've had some really challenging moments And one of the biggest things that I've been working on, so thank you for bringing that up, is being able to pause and breathe in the moment. And which is where we started, right, Jen? Talking about self-awareness and all of this learning that we've been doing is really not just about reading the book. (laughs) Although there's a lot of great books out there. It's not just about, um, you know, doing the journal or joining a group or liking something on Facebook. Really, we do this work because in the moment it makes a difference. It does. And it's, you know, if I hadn't read all the books that I've read and all the, all the resources and, and leaned into learning these things, I would still be go, 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 go brick wall syndrome. Mm-hmm. And gosh, I hated that. I hated that because it would be when I hit that brick wall, it would take me days to recover. And now instead of taking days to recover, I just spend an evening or a couple evenings or, you know, I, I don't ever get to a brick wall. I don't yeah. get there. Anymore. I see the science way before I get to that brick wall, and it's much easier to care for myself when I'm honest about those signs than when it's you know been weeks and weeks of not taking care of myself and weeks and weeks of just running ragged that I hit that brick wall, and then it's mm-hmm. it's, hard. it's much harder to come back from a brick wall than it is to see it before, you know. Absolutely, 
Yeah. And know that that's really our wish for all of you who are watching too, is on your own self-awareness journeys that the more that we get to know ourselves and, and we're still on this journey for sure, <laughs> none of us are perfect at this, that we'll be able to notice in the moment what we need and to be gentle with ourselves, to be kind to ourselves, to reach out for support from others when we need it, and also to better support ourselves when we need that too. And Jen and I both have some new business opportunities that we are pursuing um, to help support the communities around us and the communities that we are really passionate about supporting. Um, and so we're excited to end today by sharing some of those with us, um, with all of you. And we also just wanna give you an invitation because these conversations are continuing, we are planning to do these on the first Thursday of the month, um, as long as y'all keep joining us. And, and we have started to share our videos on YouTube as well. So if you've missed some of the past ones and would like to watch them, you can. Um, a couple of the topics that we have planned, we want to talk more about perfectionism as that's something that both Jen and I have worked through a lot. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work on that lately, as has Jen. Um, some of the resources we've been looking at, um, of course, Brene Brown's The Gifts of Imperfection, which is celebrating 10 years right now. Um, Carol Dweck Mindset, as well as Me and White Supremacy, Leila Said. Um, talks a lot about how our perfectionism gets in the way. Um, and um, as well as Rabbi Brad, Brad Hirschfield, you don't have to be wrong for me to be right. It's another favorite. Ooh. I know. Ooh, it's a good one, Jen. I love that book. <laughs> It's, oh, it's fabulous. So we've got some great resources that we've been exploring and that we're excited to share with you down the road. If there are topics you would love to hear us talk about, or if there are resources you would like us to share about, please feel free to add those in the comments or message us. In the meantime, some exciting ways that we have um, to help support the communities around us. Jen, do you want to go first and talk about what you have coming up with Career Driven Mom and your, all of the things happening in your world? Yeah, so I do have a group on Facebook called Career Driven Mom if you want to come and be a part of it. I'm hoping to get some things moving a little bit more in that group. Um, I've had it open for a little while and haven't been doing too much, um, but I'm hoping to start getting um, some weekly video things to help start talking about finding harmony in your life. Um, and uh, starting in September, I'll be launching my podcast, and so I'm looking for um, women who identify as career driven moms. Um, Sorry, uh, any, if any men want to be a part of it, I would I'd love to see if, if you um, you identify with career driven moms or even allies and things like that, I think would be wonderful um, to have, but um, focus is really helping women find that harmony as a mom, as a parent, in parenting and in their careers. So if, um, if you want to be a part of it, let me know. Um, and hopefully it will start in September and just kind of still working out, um, you know, the platform and what all is going to be happening with Career Driven Mom. Yay. Thanks so much, Jen. This is one of those areas where when we were talking earlier about um, having friends and, and people in our support systems that have different strengths and areas of expertise than us, um, it was really fun for Jen and I when we started this Extroverted Jen's. Um, experience together, adventure together. And we were looking at where we wanted to go down the road and we realized that we had two different paths. Mm -hmm. And it was so much fun to realize that we can have this space where we can support each other and encourage each other and share with you all. And at the same time, we both have different areas that we are traveling and different um, things that we're passionate about, which I love um, connecting with people that are passionate about different things than I am. And, and so Jen, I'm super excited for you about that. Um, yeah. I am really thrilled to get to share with y'all that MT Mentor is officially launched. So I will be putting that website into the comments there and we are live with my MT Mentor membership group. And so um, this is a, a group for music therapy students and professionals both. And it is a place where we can support each other and encourage each other and grow together. And so being an, a member of MT Mentor means that you have access to one-on-one -on -one weekly office hours with me. You have access to weekly peer supervision groups. There's a group for professionals and a group for students. You have access to a private Facebook group for further discussions, and you have access to monthly content packets. And so this first month of August, the content packet is about sustainable self-care. It's an overview with some additional um, 
perks that weren't included in any of my past presentations. So there is new material and new resources in there. And then um, September, the resource content packet will be all about our personal and professional core values and creating and living by those. And from there, we're going to take suggestions um, from the members of what they want to hear more of. I have content packets, um, I parts of them ready to go related to all sorts of things around self-care, self-awareness, mindfulness, general music therapy, music therapy, mental health, all sorts of different areas. And I'm super excited about that. The packets come with graphics and infographics. They come with a video that is 50 minutes long. And so it does count for one CMTE credit for professionals. There are transcripts um, and slides and notes to go along with that video too. And um, there's also the CBMT board domains and learning objectives, a bunch of references and a reflection page for that journey too. So I'm super excited about these content packets. Um, you can also, if you're a professional, you can earn one CMTE for every group peer for every peer supervision group that you attend to. And so I have the certificates for those. And then you just have to write a summary and, and I, um, members will have that information on how to do that through CBMT. So super excited about that membership groups launching that today, this moment, the email went out to those people who were most interested um, and had already given me their information at um, 10 o'clock central when Jen and I went live here and it's, it's now open to all y'all. And um, the podcast that I'm doing along with this that is for mentors in the field of music therapy from a variety of areas will hopefully go live in September. So I have the trailer that I'm going to get through the whole Apple thing so that it all gets approved and ready to go. And then we'll be launching that um, hopefully next month when we're with y'all. So really excited about that. Um, one more comment from Amy Marie Tippy. I love that there's so much discussion about balancing work and being a mom. I'm so excited to learn about that balance far before even having kids, which is such a great point. <laughs> Um, an amazing career-driven mom, Stephanie Boxa, who happens to also be my sister. She's phenomenal, an amazing fifth grade teacher and mother, um, says so awesome. Um, thank you all for the encouragement, for your wisdom. Um, the tagline that I love for Empty Mentor is fill your cup and share your wisdom. And we really uh, appreciate having this opportunity to get to share a little bit of our wisdom from all y'all and also get to learn from you all in the process too. Yeah. I love it, Jen. Thank you. And congratulations. I can't wait to be a part of your group because um, I know I still have so much to learn from you. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, we are going to be wrapping it up for today. We'll be back with y'all again on the first Thursday of the month. In the meantime, feel free to reach out if you have questions, comments, suggestions, feedback. Know that we are here to listen and continue to learn with and from each other, with and from you all um, as this journey continues. So thank you, everybody. Please take care. Be kind to yourselves. Be gentle with yourselves. Reach out and find that harmony around you. Um, and take just a moment, maybe right now, coming back to where we started today, to share something that you're grateful for, whether that's texting somebody that you're grateful for to thank them, or sending a thank you card, or just taking a moment to journal or draw or reflect or meditate on, on the things that you are grateful for today. Know that we are grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in September. All right. Take care, y'all. Thanks.